My name is Danielle Bassett, and I'm the Skirkanich Assistant Professor of Innovation in the Department of Bioengineering at the University of Pennsylvania. This structural connectivity is also something that... My current work is focused on understanding how the brain is connected and how that connectivity pattern is changed in disease states or as we learn new skills. I had always been fascinated by problems in neuroscience, uh, especially in psychiatric disease. However, my real passion was for math and physics. So all throughout college and my graduate school work, I was very interested in combining these two loves. I took a very circuitous path to where I am now. I began in a nursing school, and that was partly influenced by my father, who's a physician. But I realized after about a year and a half that I really missed math and physics, and that was where my real, true love was. So I switched to a physics degree, but all throughout that time period, I always knew that I was still interested in medicine and specifically how the brain worked. The brain is a very complicated system, and so requires extremely complicated methods to understand it. Math and physics give you the tools that enable you to understand those complexities in new ways that you would not be able to with traditional neuroscientific methods. So each line here is a different sensor in, in the array. We use MRI facilities to take images of human brains to understand which parts of the brain are active or lighting up at a particular time, and then how they communicate with each other. It's the measurement tool that we use to understand connectivity patterns in the brain. I am fascinated with how brain connectivity patterns change over different time scales, from seconds to years. I'm interested in how brains reconfigure, especially to enable us to adapt our behavior. So I'm very interested in learning, because in that scenario we have changes in our brain that enable us to pick up a new behavior or a new skill. We can move through the brain uh, three-dimensionally to understand how the different areas of the brain are connected up to one another. Recently we discovered that the people who learn very well are people who have very flexible brain connectivity patterns. So these are people whose connections between different parts of the brain can reconfigure over very short time scales. People who are less able to learn are less flexible in their brain configurations. And we think that potentially has implications for both neurorehabilitation or optimizing learning in healthy people. What we're working on now is predicated on what we've discovered recently. What we need to do is to understand which parts of the brain we might be able to push to enhance flexibility, to push the brain into states that enable better learning. When I got the call, the first thing I said was, are you sure you have the right person? <laughs> I was very surprised. I was a bit speechless. It's really a complete honor to have this fellowship, and I think that it will give me some quiet time away from the sort of hustle of gathering funding for um, my research projects to sit down and be really creative and think about what I could do um, that I don't have to prove will work at the beginning. Um, so it gives me some time for really creative processes to happen.